Edmund Honahan is the one person that has stood up most consistently for people and abused by bankers. Well, I, I, when I heard of uh, the removal of Edmund Honahan from uh, cases to do with banking uh, in his job as a uh, taxi master in the High Court, I, I was astonished at one level, but not surprised in a certain sense, in this sense, that I've known Ed, Edmund for some time. Not well, but we've run into each other and we've spoken. And, you know, he was a very approachable man and a man that I've had conversations with. and. Uh, a man of extraordinarily high principles, there's no doubt about it, and a man who was interested in justice as opposed to being interested in law, and a man who really seemed to care passionately about the stuff he was doing, and a man who seemed to see something in his role as being to speak on behalf of those who were weaker in all of these engagements that happened before him, and to be aware of their needs and th their vulnerabilities. and uh, uh, so. That's very unusual in the legal system in Ireland. You know, it's actually almost a contradiction in terms that if you're in the legal system that you're like that. And I actually look, used to look at Edmund Honahan and say, where on earth did you come out of? And how did you get in there? You know, because he, uh, he was amazing. Uh, he is a great, great man. And, and there are not many great, great men or women in the Irish judiciary, I can promise you that. There are one or two others, but they're keeping their heads down and I would advise on the basis of Edmund Honahan's experience that they keep their heads even further down if they want to survive in there. Don't let anybody know that you care about justice. Don't let anybody know that you care about people. You know, make, give noises that you're in favour of keeping the status quo intact and that you are intent upon doing the will of the most powerful in your society and so on and you'll be quite safe then in the Irish judicial system. Uh, but it's a, it's a disgrace, it's an absolute disgrace uh, uh, what has happened and uh, to humiliate such a great man, such a good man, a man that I would say if this country has a future, Edmund Honahan will be at the centre of that future and if he's not it probably won't have a future. Uh, so uh, it's shocking but not surprising because that's the way it's going. In my experience for years and years and years of writing as a journalist about the legal system, primarily about the family law system, uh, it seemed to me that you know this the, the 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 absence of empathy with the pain and grief of ordinary people was so writ large in the whole system that it was absolutely heartbreaking and 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 infuriating and and grief making uh, to to be involved in it at all to have to go and and listen to the stories that came out of those courts and see the absolute callous indifference there was towards people and their lives and their needs and their children's lives and their children's needs, anything like that. You know, it's, so I'm not surprised. A little bit surprised that the, the, the instrument of the attack was uh, Peter Kelly, who has, you know, so far a, a generally good reputation as an honest and, and upright man. And uh, he has some questions to answer now in order to, I would say, preserve that reputation and to come forward and say, who does he represent? For whom does he speak? For what does he speak when he does this to Edmund Honahan? Edmund Honahan is the one person that has stood up most consistently for people and abused by bankers and stock jobbers and speculators and you know uh, all these other riffraff of our economies, modern economy. And uh, there was one man who would stand up and one man you could go and talk to you could talk to him like this is the thing and you could call him Edmund and he would talk to you and he would have a cup of coffee and, and you tell him the story and he would say okay and it's time we the people who are supposed to be sovereign in these matters started to find ways of getting reaching into that system and fixing what's gone wrong because what's wrong can be described by one word and one word only and that word is corruption.